what is the gap between the 69th and 70th week of Daniel? The Bible describes two fullnesses and the fullness of times. When is the fullness of times? It's when these two fullnesses have come to fruition. So in Daniel 9, 24 through 27, the angel Gabriel explained to Daniel that there would be 70 weeks of sevens, or 490 years, until Messiah comes to set things right. So, in the order of the books of the Bible, there's a timeline that begins from creation and the time from Adam until the coming of Jesus Christ, the first coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, is approximately 4,000 years. And so... <clears throat> There were 4,000 years, and I'm going to try to show you that there's going to be about 7,000 years that God is using right now to decide who's going to live in earth and who's going to live in heaven. Because between the Lord coming to declare himself to be the Messiah on that little donkey and the last seven years of Daniel's timeline, God has a gap. And in the gap is the cross. And also this blue dot, which represents the one year extension of mercy to Israel. To believe that, you know, Jesus Christ was their Messiah so that they can be take part in the kingdom on earth. And also this yellow part, which is the mystery. So God has an earthly plan, and here's some more of the earthly plan. But this yellow part is the mystery, God's heavenly plan. So this heavenly plan it was not made known until Paul was saved on the road to Damascus in Acts 9. So the Bible can be divided into time past, but now, and we're living towards the end of this yellow part waiting for the rapture because we're between Christ appearing to Saul of Tarsus Paul and Christ appearing to to rapture the body of Christ so we're that's pretty imminent could be happen at any time then God will resume his um, dealings with Israel and send the seven years of tribulation and then Christ's second coming to set up his kingdom. So um, let's find out how God solved all of these problems. Because by one cross, Christ saved two groups to put his spirit in them. So when someone believes the gospel, then the spirit of the Son of God is given to them and the gospel changes depending on the dispensation so when the sinner believes the Lord in this dispensation that Christ died for our sins was buried and rose again according to 1 Corinthians 15 3 and 4 we receive his righteousness the Holy Ghost is put in in us his spirit so we we know that from reading about Jacob's dream in Genesis 28, 12, and 13 that there's a, a ladder between heaven and earth where angels were descending and ascending. And the Lord was at the top of that ladder. But when the Lord spoke to Nathaniel, he said that the Lord would be at the bottom of the ladder, um, you know, and the angels would be ascending and descending on him. So there's communication between heaven and earth because Jesus Christ will rule over both realms. Um, so 
Let's look at the two fullnesses. Paul said, I say then, have they, that's Israel, stumbled that they should fall. So they stumbled at the cross. God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. So the fall was at the stoning of Stephen because they received one more year extension of mercy. And we're going to see that. Now, if the fall of them, Israel, be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them, the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness. So their fallen diminishing um, was the riches of the Gentiles because God began working with the Gentiles through Paul. For I speak to you Gentiles inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles. I magnify mine office. So this is Romans 11, 11 through 13. So we found out about the fullness of, of Israel here and we're going to look at that more closely soon because their fullness will be at Christ's second coming to resurrect them. Now let's look at our fullness, the Gentiles, during the mystery. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel. So it's in part because Peter's group were not blinded. They believed the Messiah. Peter's group being the leader of the twelve and the little flock. Until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. So they have partial, Israel has partial blindness until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. So when everyone that's going to be saved to live in heaven is come in, that's, uh, there won't be partially blinded anymore. The mystery is a new chance for Gentiles to live in heaven. So Israel fell in Acts 7. The body of Christ could not have been saved until after Israel's fall. And um, so the body of Christ began in Acts 9. Could not have begun until Israel's fall either. So there's been God is spending about 7,000 years to find the believers that will live in heaven and on earth so there was from the time of the command to rebuild Jerus uh, the temple in Jerusalem and the wall around it which was in Nehemiah 2.6 till Christ came riding in on the donkey was 483 years or 69 weeks. So if there's going to be 70 weeks of 7th, which is 490 years, 7 years is missing. So those 7 years will be the, what we call the tribulation. But it's been postponed and there's a gap between Christ writing in and the tribulation. And in this gap is this cross for one thing. And also the blue dot. And the blue dot is the one year extension of mercy descri described in Luke 13, 6 through 9, when the letters Hebrews to Revelation were written, because there were little flock believers saved during Christ's earthly ministry and after the coming of the Holy Ghost during that year. And there'll be more little red men, or, or part of that little flock, saved during the tribulation to add because God said before she travailed she brought forth before her pain came she was delivered of a man child Isaiah 66 7 so the man child is the little flock of believers that were before the travail before the tribulation then in the next verse, Isaiah 66, 8, God said, Who hath heard such a thing? Who hath seen such a thing? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Isaiah 66, 
that was seven and this is eight so this was after travail she brought forth more and the, at his second coming the nation was born in one day so the fullness of the Gentiles is the rapture so the 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 blue dot the cross the blue dot and the yellow part which is the mystery from Acts 9 with Saul that began with Saul's salvation who's known as Paul and ends with the rapture between these two appearings of Christ is the dispensation of grace which is written about in Romans to Philemon when God is forming the body of Christ to live in heaven so the fullness of the Gentiles is the rapture and we talked about the fullness of Israel which is when they're resurrected because the Old Testament Saints the little flock saints and the tribulation saints will all be resurrected after Christ's second coming so until the time of Christ's earthly ministry there was about 4,000 years then after that there was a one-year extension of mercy between Acts 2 and 7 and then it's been Paul for nearly 2,000 years so that and adds up to 4,001 years and then there's going to be that 1,000 year reign so now we're talking 7,000 years see how easy that was okay so to Peter God said fear not little flock for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom Luke 12 32 so they're going to have the kingdom on earth blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection that's the one we talked about here it's Christ's second coming such on such the second death has no power but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years Revelation 20 verse 6 so there's a thousand years and they're going to be kings and priests between Messiah and the Gentiles to try to say of Gentiles in prophecy and uh, when they, they they will get the spirit in them according to the new covenant but God has has been very wise and prudent to us as Paul explained because the Bible's laid out prophecy mystery prophecy so Satan thought oh God is not going to give them the new covenant until his second coming so I'll take full advantage of them little flock during the tribulation but God had the Holy Ghost come before them so that they could have his spirit in them to help them through the tribulation so that Satan wouldn't make mincemeat out of them and God has been very wise towards us to give us believers in mystery the Holy Ghost also and also by keeping the mystery a mystery from Satan by giving progressive revelation so that um, Satan would not hinder the crucifixion of Christ but actually help it to happen wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence Ephesians 1 8 the next verse having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he hath purposed in himself that in the dispensation of the fullness of times so when is the dispensation of the fullness of times it's after the thousand years he might gather together in one all things in Christ both which are in heaven and which are on earth even in him Ephesians 1 8 through 10 so he's going to gather the heaven and the earth together in one so eternal life in heaven is what God is offering now eternal life on earth is off the table until after our rapture when we have our new bodies at the rapture with his spirit in them then we will sin no more 
Through Israel's fall, salvation has come to the Gentiles. Today, God is showing mercy to the Gentiles. And Jews are considered Gentiles. So any Jew that decides to believe Paul's gospel can be saved and have eternal life in heaven. During the millennial kingdom, the thousand-year reign of Christ, Israel will save Gentiles in prophecy after their rise. And their rise is talked about in Isaiah 60, 1 through 3. So let's look at the one-year extension of mercy. This was prophesied in Luke 13, 6 through 9. He spake also this parable, a certain man, that's a father, had a fig tree. The fig tree being represents the religious life of Israel, planted in his vineyard, the vineyard standing for the nation. And he came and sought fruit thereon, faith, and found none. Then said he unto the dresser, the son of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree. That was the three years of Christ's earthly ministry. And find none. Cut it down. Why cumbereth it the ground? It's, you know, why is it even bothering the ground to be there? And he, the son, answered ring, said unto him, the father, Lord, let it alone this year. See one more year here? Also, till I shall dig about it and dung it with the Holy Ghost. And if it bear fruit, well, and if not, then after that, thou shalt cut it down. Luke 13, 6 through 9. Now in Psalm 8, it says, What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visiteth him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. Psalm 8, 4 through 6. So man was a little lower than the angels. But because we have the life and spirit and righteousness of the Son of God in us, we are a little higher than the angels. And it's not because of anything we've done. It's just by his grace he's given us Christ in us, the hope of glory. So Paul said, Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things pertaining to this life? 1 Corinthians 6, 3. So we're going to judge the good angels, the ones that were faithful to God and loyal to him. They're powerful beings. They're going to minister to us. We're going to judge between right and wrong for them and they will be ministering also to Peter's group so and remember they're going to be going up and down from heaven to earth so here are some books that can help you God's Secret a primer with pictures for how to rightly divide the word of truth it's a hundred pages that um, is an overview of the whole Bible to help you And then, uh, could God have a 7,000-year plan for mankind? Rightly dividing Galatians. God's dealing with the church based on grace, and God's dealing with the nation of Israel on the basis of his covenants. So there's two differences between Paul and the 12. Many differences. And then we have um, a series on the Acts of the Apostles. We have a, a book called Miss the Rapture, read this commentary on Hebrews. All of these books are available on Amazon. Our website is MarianneManley.com. The YouTube channel, Salvation, Rightly Dividing and the Rapture. Truth Be Told also carries our videos. Please like, share, and subscribe. And thank you for watching. God bless you.